Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to have a quick look at all of the really nice things that Spring Boot provides to make it super easy to deploy applications on Kubernetes. And then we're going to take that app and hook it up to Datastax Astra. Astra is a database as a service offering that's powered by Apache Cassandra. If you want to take this home and get your hands on it yourself, I recommend checking out this blog that I'm showing on the screen here. It'll walk you through step-by-step -step full application stack going on your local laptop using Spring Cloud Gateway, Spring Boot, Spring Data, and also a Cassandra operator called CAS operator. So before I kicked off this video, I started a database in Datastax Astra. So if we have a look at that, what you see here is all of the things that you need to connect an application to the database. And this is running in Astra's free tier. Uh, there's about 10 gigs of storage, pretty small uh, deployment here, but it's good for demonstration purposes like this. So we, our key space name is BetterBots, our username is C underscore user, and our password is C underscore pass. And I'm mentioning that because I'll show how to load that, those credentials in via a Kubernetes secret. And the other thing we need here to connect our Spring Boot app is this uh, secure connect bundle. So I'll go ahead and download that uh, to my local machine here. And I also set up a small cluster in Minikube, uh, my local machine, and we'll use that to go ahead and run this demo. So flipping over quick to the app, uh, you'll see here that I only have a few dependencies. I have the web starter, the Kubernetes config starter, and actuator. And then I'm also loading in the Cassandra driver and Swagger hub so that we can play with the REST API. And then this is just a one POJO application. We have a product with an ID, name, description, price, and a last updated timestamp. We're going to use Spring REST uh, to build our REST API. You can see here that we're loading in these uh, libraries that really abstract and remove most of the bo boilerplate that we'd otherwise have to write ourselves. Uh, you can see here that we're building a very simple API uh, for searching, adding, and deleting those products. And the other thing to point out is the product data access object. This is where all of our database queries are defined. I wrote out the CQL, but you can also use the uh, Java drivers object mapper or spring data. Uh, and you can see here that the CQL is very similar to what you would expect with SQL. We have our create table, our insert statements, our select statements, and our delete statements. So one of the really cool things that Spring Cloud Kubernetes lets you do is load your settings directly via Kubernetes config maps. And so in this case, we have this Astra Secure Connect bundle setting which the path for it is app astra creds. And that app astra creds corresponds to a volume that we're mounting will store that secure connect bundle that will load into a Kubernetes secret. We're also using these Kubernetes secrets to store our database username and password. And you can see here that we're setting those as environment variables that our application will take and used to configure our database connection. Here we have the username, the password, and then down here we're using this builder customizer hook to pass in the connect bundle and the auth credentials to the Cassandra Java driver. So now let's actually take a look and run this thing to see just how easy it is with a few steps to get this thing up and running in Kubernetes. So we'll start by creating a namespace and then we will create a secret for our username and password. Again, this is C user and C pass. And then lastly, we will load in that secure connect bundle that we downloaded from the UI. And just to make sure that all of this landed in Kubernetes, we can go ahead and describe the secrets. And we see here that we have both the secure connect bundle and we have our DB secret username and password. So that's really all we need to get up and going and deploy this thing. So now I'll go ahead and deploy it. And we'll take a look at the pods that were started. 
you see this one running here for our Spring Boot service. And then we can also have a look at the logs to make sure that everything is starting up as expected. So it looks like here that everything is booting up for us. Uh, I also showed before that we have a Swagger Hub UI configured for this. Uh, so we'll hop over to that as the app boots. And that is at 8083 Swagger UI. Looks like the app isn't quite up yet. Now it is. Try that again. Oh, that's why. I forgot to forward the port. So with this app, uh, we're using node port to expose access to our server, uh, to our service. So we have to expose that port locally in order to connect to it. Typically you would use uh, Kubernetes ingress or something like the Spring Cloud Gateway, which this full demo uh, does use, and that can control your access to the cluster. So we load up that Swagger UI again, and this time it looks like it's working. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Awesome. So we have our product controller here, and also my laptop is sounding like it's about to enter outer space. It's six years old, so I'm glad it's just still sticking with me at this point. But we'll go ahead and try out that endpoint that we created. We'll execute that in Swagger Hub here. And we see that we got a response 200 code, which means it worked. We'll also just enter one more JSON doc there to play with this and 200 code. Now if we go down to our search API, try it out. The name of that was mobile. Execute it and we see the two entries that we just submitted. So just to make sure that these actually landed in Astra, we'll double check using this hosted CQL console that they have. Log in, got the credentials right the first time, that never happens. And boom, we see those two rows inserted into Astra. So again, I hope that showed that Spring Boot, especially the Spring Cloud Kubernetes library makes it really easy to get up and started with Spring Kubernetes. And then with that public endpoint in Astra, uh, it really makes it easy for applications to connect. And the nice thing about Spring Cloud Kubernetes is that we can store both the database credentials and that secure connect bundle in Kubernetes secrets uh, and use those in our application to connect to the database. So I hope that was a helpful walkthrough. Again, you can check out this blog post if you want to try this out locally. Uh, and again, Astra is just astra.datastacks.com. Kick the tires. It's pretty cool stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.